Hey everybody, thank you for joining in on today's Church Daily. Today, me and my daughter who's knocked out right now, we are gonna talk about friendship. Um, and this actually came from reading the book of Job with my youth group. We are, uh, during our Bible study, we are going through the book of Job and looking at his life and looking at the situations that happen and uh, kind of grabbing out things that apply to us today. And so in Job chapter two, at the end of it, you see Job's friends come to his aid, right? Job has lost everything in a matter of minutes. He is made aware of everything that he had is gone, except his wife and his health at the moment, and that's in chapter one. In Job chapter two, his health becomes an issue. He is covered in these boils, and now he is trying to scrape them off, right? Uh, and, and if you go along, you see that his wife tells him, you don't need to be faithful anymore. Curse God and die. And right after that, you see that his friends heard about this and immediately they drop everything and they make an effort to go and comfort Job. And as they approach Job, they recognize that he's covered in boils and it says that they can't even recognize who they're looking at anymore. They can't recognize their friend. And so as they get closer, they realize the position of his heart. They realize what, what uh, countenance that he's in. They realize the, the pain that he's in, the anguish that he's going through from losing his seven kids, all of his, his, his uh, materialistic things, right? And now he's covered in these boils. And instead of trying to be the savior in that moment, they choose to comfort him in the way that he needed to be comforted. They literally tear their clothes, throw dust over their heads, and they sit with him for seven days and for seven nights. Can I tell you this, guys? There is not a single person on this earth, including you, including me, that was created to live this life alone. There is scripture that tells us that when our brother in Christ is mourning, that we should mourn with them. When they are rejoicing, we should rejoice with them. Which means that we ourselves have to allow people into that place of vulnerability where they actually can mourn with us. And when we choose not to do so, we are resisting an experience with God that comes with relationship with other people. And then we are also limiting those that want to be a part of our lives. We are limiting their relationship or their experience with God that comes with mourning with those that are mourning. When your body is hurt, every other part of your body goes to aid that part of your body. If you stub your toe or if you bang your knee on something, immediately the pain, uh, it, it shoots through your body and all of your body goes to try to comfort that, bo that, that body part. And the rest of the body actually takes on the responsibility of whatever body part is hurting so that that particular body part can have time to heal properly and get back to what it was created to do. That is exactly what we were called to do as a body of Christ. When one of us is hurting, we should all go to the aid of that person. That includes you. When you are hurting, you should allow your brothers and sisters to come and comfort you in the way that the Lord has commanded us to. That means that you have to open up your heart to let people in. That means that you have to trust the people that God has placed around you. And although that can be a challenge, there is much benefit that comes from it. Because if you look at this story of Job, right? Who's to say what would have happened if his friends had not shown up? The only person that Job was surrounded by at the time was his wife. And his wife was telling him, curse God and die. There's no need to be faithful anymore. You've lost everything. You have every right to curse God and die but his friends showed up. And who's to say that it wasn't, if, if they had not shown up, what Job would have done? Maybe he would have cursed God and died. Maybe he would have committed suicide, who knows? It's not in the Bible, so I'm not in the business of assuming, but I can only imagine, right? So, can I challenge you and encourage you today? If you find it difficult to allow people into that place of vulnerability where they can be there for you just as Job's friends were for him, can I challenge you to allow the Holy Spirit into that place? 
allow Jesus into that place and allow him to heal your heart from whatever happened in your past with people so that you can allow those people that genuinely love you and want to be there for you into your heart and into that space where they can be there for you when you need them. Because you need them. I need them. I need those friends in my life that I can go to and they just let me vent without trying to be the savior, without trying to give me answers, but allow me to grieve or be in whatever emotions I'm in in that moment. And then once I'm done, bring me back to what the word of God says. We all do. We need friends. We were never created to do this life alone. We were never created to bear the burdens of life alone. So whatever it is that's blocking you from allowing those people into your heart, to, from allowing those people into that space of vulnerability, give it to God. Because there is an experience with God that comes with allowing people into that place. So let's pray. Let's get out of here. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for today. I thank you and I praise you for your word. And I pray that as we grow in your word, that we would allow you into that place in, in our hearts where, where we find it difficult to trust others. We would allow you to heal us that we may experience you in the relationships that we have with other believers. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you are encouraged. I pray that you are challenged and that you are blessed and have a good day. We love you. She's passed out, but it's cool. Love you guys. Peace.